Hey guys, welcome into the 14. I'm Nick Cole, and we're breaking down each SEC football game in week 12 from a betting perspective. Today, we're talking about the New Mexico State Aggies visiting the Kentucky Wildcats. This game's going to be played on Saturday, November 20th at noon Eastern time at Kroger Field in Lexington, Kentucky. It's going to be broadcast on the SEC network. From a betting perspective, the Wildcats open as a 36-point favorite, and as of Thursday afternoon, that line is held true. The over-under for this game opened at 62.5 and, and has dropped to 60 as the recording of this video. I'll bring in our betting analyst, Christopher Smith. Christopher, in a, in a week of underwhelming matchups, this might be one of the bigger ones that at least involves two uh, FBS teams in the SEC this week, right? Yeah, you kind of not feel bad for New Mexico State, but you certainly get the feeling that they're going to earn their paychecks, right? I mean, they go from playing – South Carolina State and San Jose State to play in at Alabama and at Kentucky, pow, pow, right in a row. So we'll see how they uh, fare in this game, and we'll see if we can find a way to make money on it. But why don't you let us know the weather forecast, injuries, and get into next news and notes. Sure. We'll start with the weather. In Lexington on Saturday afternoon, we're looking at a forecast of upper 40s at kickoff. We'll move into the low 50s by the time this one's over. Uh, there's a low chance of rain, but do watch the wind a little bit. They're forecasting 10 miles per hour. For that, which is right around the threshold at which we start getting concerned about it impacting the total on a game. So check that before you make your bet. Uh, on the injury side of things, Kentucky starting outside linebacker Jordan Wright has played five snaps since week seven at Georgia. And defensive tackle Marquan McCall returned for 19 snaps against Vanderbilt last week. Those are two guys that are key pieces of that Wildcats defense. That it'll be interesting to see how much they're utilized, if they're utilized at all in a game that Kentucky should be able to win with or without them. Um, and on the New Mexico State side of things, wide receiver Robert Downs III and Dominic Jacinto remain out for the Aggies. News and notes, Christopher, you sort of talked about, we talked about this a little bit um, in the Vanderbilt video, if you want to check this out. Um, and we do in every SEC game this week, but Kentucky got right against Vanderbilt in week 11. Uh, they had stumbled through a, a three-game losing streak after starting the season 6-0. and And, you know, they were 20... 21 point favorite in most books by kickoff against Vanderbilt. And they scored four touchdowns in their first four offensive possessions. Things they accrued to a 31 to three lead in that game at halftime. And, and if you were back in the Wildcats as a better, like I was, you felt really good about where they were at. And then they just sat on it in the second half. They ended up winning 34 to 17, but Vanderbilt ultimately covered that game. Uh, but we can feel confident after watching that game, even though Kentucky didn't make any money for its backers, you did sort of get back to what we expect from Kentucky and what we saw from Kentucky earlier in the season, which is run the ball with Chris Rodriguez, throw the ball to Wandale Robinson enough to keep the defense honest, and then play really good, solid defense and win the football game. And you mentioned it earlier, Christopher, looking at New Mexico State on the other side of the field. This is sort of welcome to the SEC part two uh, for this team. Last week, they were in Tuscaloosa. Last time we saw them, it was 59 to three Crimson Tide in a game that really Alabama could have named the score. I know that the, the victory of the day for New Mexico State was they jumped out to a three to nothing lead. They forced a punt from Alabama on their first possession. And then it was all Crimson Tide from there. But we do need to remember what kind of team we're talking about here. Is we, we're, we're assessing whether Kentucky can cover a 36 point spread or not. New Mexico State is one and nine. Their lone win is against FCS South Carolina State. And defensively, they've given up at least 28 points in all 10 games they've played this season. So taking that into account, taking what we saw from Kentucky into account, Christopher, how do we make some money with a spread like 36 in this game? Yeah, you know, uh, we touched on this during our Alabama video last week, but it just occurred to me to take another look at New Mexico State's schedule and this is absolutely brutal. This is their fifth road game in their last six. And just in their last four, including this week, it started out, uh, you know, they had three consecutive road games in October. And one of those was a round trip to Hawaii, which is a, a pretty long trip. And then last week, you know, Las Cruces, New Mexico to Tuscaloosa and back. That's a long long trip also and then now you gotta go from las cruces to lexington kentucky which is also a very long trip and this is a team that uh is from the mountain time zone 
And this is another noon Eastern time kickoff for them. So 10 a.m., you know, mountain time for where they're from. I mean, that's just brutal right there in terms of schedules. And uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot for New Mexico State to uh, overcome that with. Jonah Johnson is the quarterback. He has an adjusted completion percentage on deep passes. That's dead last among the 128 quarterbacks with at least 20 attempts. He has a 16.7% adjusted completion percentage on those. New Mexico State is also 124th in rushing EPA, 130th in standard downs line yards, and 125th in stuff rate. And despite injuries along the defensive line, which you alluded to, Kentucky just held Danny to 96 rushing yards, and their defense uh, against the run is still 26th in EPA per snap. So, you know, again, like we said at Alabama uh, last week, a shutout would not be shocking here. And anything more than about 10 points would be a pretty big surprise. And on the other side of the ball, you know, Kentucky uh, did give Wandale Robinson and Josh Ali 10 of the 14 catches uh, last week against Vanderbilt, but they rushed 36 times for 236 yards. And if you look at the Alabama game, Alabama ran uh, behind a beat up offensive line with essentially one healthy scholarship running back. And they still ran 41 times for 247 yards against New Mexico State. So uh, this is the perfect game script for, for Mark Stoops in Kentucky. He reminds me a lot of Kirby Smart. He wants to run the ball. He wants to play defense. He wants to keep the game low possessions, grind clock. And so I think this is a perfect game script for Kentucky. You know, the thing is that uh, the, the game next week against Louisville actually has become very important for this Kentucky team especially after Kentucky fans thought they could get to 11 and one or, or 10 and two. Now they're sitting at three losses. And so uh, getting healthy and getting ready for the Louisville game is going to be super, super important for this Kentucky team. Uh, we saw what uh, Kentucky did, as you alluded to earlier in the Vanderbilt video, what Kentucky did after they got a lead at halftime against Vanderbilt, how they came out in the second half and coasted. And so we may see the exact same thing in this spot, but, Nick, do you have anything exciting for our viewers and also who are you picking for this game? I do, actually, Christopher. I got a way for them <clears throat> to double their money uh, that they could use to bet on this game, uh, which I do have a, a decent lean on this one, so maybe maybe it's worthwhile. We've got a partnership with Action 24-7 Sportsbook, and for new customers, there's a special deal for a limited time. You can get your deposit match 100% up to $800. Uh, so if you sign up today and make your first deposit using code SOUTH14 at SOUTH14, and Action will double your money up to $800. So download the app or visit action247.com to get things started. Action 24-7 is by Tennesseans for Tennesseans, and you've got action. And when I look at how I'm going to make my action in this game, I, I like uh, the total in this game, actually. I, I think that there was a formula that we hit on last week. If you watched our video for Alabama and New Mexico State, it was, you know, if you're making us pick, aside we'll lay the points with Alabama but we really liked the under 67 because we we felt like New Mexico State was going to be limited in the amount of points they could score and then Alabama wasn't going to be particularly interested in scoring as many points as humanly possible I actually think that's true in this game as well uh, so even though the the total has dropped a full touchdown from 67 to 60 on us this week I like under 60. I think Kentucky's defense is more than capable of holding New Mexico State under 10 points. And I don't see uh, a likely scenario that Kentucky scores much more than 50 points on their own. So give me the under 60. And I would say that's going to be one of my better plays. I think I'll put money on that this week. Uh, on the side, if you're making me pick for the purposes of our show, I'm going to lay the 36 with Kentucky. I think they're a much better team than New Mexico State. Uh, but I, I don't know that I'm necessarily running to the window to get that one. Uh, I feel like it's on the wrong side of that five touchdowns. How do you feel about this one? Yeah, if you watched our Alabama New Mexico State video last week, you'll remember me telling everybody, take, if you can, wait until halftime or right before halftime and take a live under in the game. And, you know, at halftime of the Alabama game last week, I was a little nervous about our our bet because I think, there were 52 points at halftime, if I'm remembering right. It was 49 to three. And there were only 10 points that the two teams put up the entire second half. 
And uh, so what I said for that video is if you can kick Alabama against the spread in the first half and then take a live under um, right toward the end of the very end of the second quarter. And uh, I think that applies here as well, more specifically. So I'm with Nick. I'm taking Kentucky minus 36 and under 60. But honestly, the, the real way to play this game, in my mind, is take Kentucky against the spread in the first half and then take a live under maybe right before halftime so you can kind of beat the crowd uh, at your sports book if you do that. But uh, for Nick Cole, I'm Christopher Smith for the 14, and we will talk to you next week.